this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use David from Recharge Green's RR Path Visualizer, a tool to simulate your Roadrunner trajectories. So RR Path Visualizer, first of all, is a project that is found on GitHub, and we will have to download the project, while I will, which I will get to in a second. So if we go to roadrunner.com, we scroll down to Tools, we'll see that we have some tools to simulate Roadrunner trajectories, and there is David's RR Path Visualizer. So if we go to the page, we find that here's the installation, and it's a path visualizer, and you write trajectories for your bot, and you stick them in a custom column project. So for install, first of all, some prerequisites for using our path visualizer for this tutorial is first of all you must have IntelliJ installed. If you don't have IntelliJ installed, you find this you can use the LearnRoadRunner.com tutorial on installing IntelliJ. The second prerequisite is that you must be familiar or have experience using Roadrunner and how to create trajectories and run them, which should be pretty basic because. If you are using, if you are looking to this tutorial for our path visualizer, obviously you are using it for Roadrunner, so you must have some experience with Roadrunner in order to use it. Otherwise, you won't really understand what's going on. Okay, so once you have IntelliJ installed, we will quickly open it up and open our IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. It doesn't matter if you have Ultimate or Community, just IntelliJ IDEA. This will not work in Android Studio as far as I know, but I think if you do a little manual work, I think, I'm pretty sure, from my understanding, there is a way to use it, but just use IntelliJ IDEA. So, we have IntelliJ IDEA open, but before we open IntelliJ, we need to download the project. So if we go to github.com slash recharge green slash path visualizer, we have the repository for our path visualizer. So now to get this project, we need to press on the green code button and we are greeted with options to clone, open with GitHub desktop or download zip. In this tutorial, I will be using the clone, but you could also download the zip, and to download the zip, you would download the zip, press on the button, you would get your zip, you would get your zip, and you would have to extract the zip file into a folder in your IntelliJ IDEA projects folder, where you can access your IntelliJ projects, which, and then you would open it if once you have it downloaded into your IntelliJ IDEA projects folder, you would do open or import, navigate to your project, and you would open it. But for clone, what I'm going to do is press on it again. I will need to press on the clipboard button, which will copy the git link. Now if we go into IntelliJ, we do get from version control. We can control V, paste in our RPath visualizer link, and just press clone. It'll take a little to load up. So, it will load up into IntelliJ in a second. Okay, so here's IntelliJ with our, our RR Path Visualizer. So, first of all, for, for this tutorial, I have this sample autonomous program that uses Roadrunner. And in this, this will actually run on the robot and do a line to linear heading and a spline to. So we have our run op mode with our drive base, our start pose, our trajectories, and our drive trajectories. This is all very basic stuff if you have used Roadrunner before. So in this tutorial, I will be trying to simulate this in our RR Path Visualizer project. So back to our IntelliJ project. We have we have this folder in our project. If we navigate into here, we find all of our folders. Now, since I've used, since I've done this on my IntelliJ pro program before, there it pops up automatically. Since I already had this configured, pops up with our folders and with a working configuration. In most cases, from reports on the FTC Discord and other places. This is not usually the case, and there are some errors. The first, the first error you have is that it is only showing the, um, 
it is only showing some git files some gradle files scratches and console and there is no folder of your actual project with your source and things like that it will only show git attributes git ignore build gradle etc all of these so to solve that issue we need to perform a gradle sync now there should be a prompt for to do a gradle sync but to do a gradle sync you would just reload all gradle projects in the gradle tab and build your RR path visualizer. Then once it is finished performing a Gradle build, it should pop up with your RR path visualizer project. So since I've already done that, it is already here, but it is already doing the Gradle sync. Okay, now that we have our files and you should have your files, there might be some other errors concerning the project's configuration. First of all, there are two configurations that come with this project. From my understanding, AppKT is the one that works. And if we go into edit configurations, this is gonna solve a multitude of problems. So first of all, what you need to do, if you're having some errors with the module, is you need to make sure that you have rpaths.main selected as your class path of module. That's the first step. The second step is to select a JRE for the project. Now this doesn't usually happen on the first try, so you need to select it manually. So you can either select OpenJDK 14 or 15. Now you might not have 14 or 15 installed, but to do that, there should be a, intel a way to add, a, if you go into um, file structure, files project structure in project SDK, you can actually add an SDK or a JDK, sorry, from your either computer or there is a way to add it with IntelliJ from download JDK. And you could download 15, which as of now is the only, is the, most, is the newest and most recent JDK. So, but I already have that downloaded. So we don't need to worry about that. But that is the first step, is to make sure you have the right SDK. And I will be using 14, but 15 also works for our path visualizer. And I'm pretty sure it comes bundled with IntelliJ. So we go back into our edit configurations, and once you have added the JDK in your project structure, you can go to the JRE here, and you would select your SDK. So I'm just gonna do 15 for user and people watching this video purposes, because that is probably the JDK you have. And it works just as fine. So we can just apply. And usually, when you, first use this rpath visualizer project some people get an error where there is no main class or it's there's no main class for app kt so to solve if we look into if we usually there is no prompts for search by name but if we go into project we navigate to our our source folder main and then kotlin we see that we cannot select app.kt that is a problem my fix of what I did was I navigated to my source folder, Kotlin, and then I right clicked on app.kt, and then I did run app.kt. That was how I fixed the problem of no main class. So that pretty much solves all of the configuration problems. The main class, after you run it, there shouldn't be a main class error and you should have the right module, the a JRE, and also another troubleshooting way, this also solved it on a separate computer for me, with the JRE, and the JRE wasn't working. What I did was I selected the Kotlin SDK, and then, after I did the Kotlin SDK, I went back and I reselected my JDK, either 14, 15 or 14, applied, and that seemed to fix the JRE problem. Okay, so now we're assuming that your IntelliJ is working and your RRPath Visualizer project is ready and set up to go. So first, if we see that if we run AppKT in the configuration or file, it brings us a window of the Visualizer, which will pop up in a second. And we get the window with the simulation. And RRPath Visualizer comes preset with a visual visualization of the robot moving left a couple inches. 
So to close out of a simulation, you either press the red square that says stop at KT, but since it is not running right now, it's gray. Or you could just simply exit out of the window like I just did. Now to use, to simulate your trajectories with our path visualizer, first of all, you need to go into trajectorygen.kt, which is where our trajectories is, and you can find the sample trajectory that comes with our, our path visualizer right here. So first of all, before you begin simulating any trajectories, what I highly recommend is that you change the drive constraints to match the same values as your drive constants file in your Roadrunner project. So in my Roadrunner project, when we go to drive constants, we will find, if we scroll back to the top, this is the drive constants file. So if we scroll down, we have our drive constraints on line 90. But the line number may depend on your drive constants. So right here, we can copy our max velocity into the max velocity here. We will copy our max acceleration into the max acceleration here. And we go to the left a little just to see it better. Our max jerk is right here. Oh, that's an error. I don't know what I just did. Yikes. Aha, uh -huh. I think it was just a copying error. So our max jerk should be zero. Depends on yours though. And then, so our, one of our, our fourth parameter is mat.2radians. You can also copy this. And that's the common syntax for two radians. You don't need math, the math object. Highly, we need to do the last one of the other heading. Okay, and angular angular jerk is usually zero, but if you if it's different for you, you would change that. Okay, so now that we we have our drive constraint set, if we run it again, the duration and the speed of the simulation will be slightly different to mat to match our robot. Okay, perfect, it's still working. So if we now we can start creating trajectories. So over here, we have our, our sample path autonomous, our sample file with our trajectories. So first of all, we need to change the start pose, which is where the robot starts on the beginning of the path. So right here is the preset, our path visualizer start pose. Simply we can copy the start pose and paste it into this and cut out this start pose of our our path visualizer there we go perfect and the java syntax also works with kotlin so when we copy and paste some things it's not a kotlin syntax as you could as i've said before do dot two radians without the math object and some other different things also there's no semicolon but you can either program this in kotlin or java it'll all work okay so now we have our start post set we if we scroll down to the create trajectories which is where our actual trajectories are we find the sample forward distance and our builder which is our trajectory and it uses the start pose and the start post heading since it is the first trajectory so now we want to change this trajectory to match what we want to do which is line to a line to linear heading to a specific pose. So we can also copy this and paste it instead of our forward. And I'm gonna add a space in a tab or enter in a tab to make it look a little better. And with the Kotlin syntax, we need to change out the new. And you can change, you can do whatever you want using trajectories you could do a strafe to a line to anything you want with the pose or vector 2d it's all very simple and if you use roadrunner before it's all it should be familiar familiar with you 
If we go into tra our trajectories overview, there's all the different clarifications on using trajectories, our trajectory builder function list of all things we can do, and you can all use this in our path visualizer, which is how the different power of how we can use this tool to simulate anything we want. Okay, so we have one simulation in one trajectory, our trajectory working. And you see it does a line to linear heading, which is what we wanted it to do. Perfect. But say you wanted to add multiple trajectories, because of course, your autonomous is most likely not just going to line to to park on the launch line. So to add another trajectory, first of all, we need to create another trajectory using the trajectory builder. So we need to replicate this first variable of builder one, which is our first trajectory. So we can create val builder two equals trajectory builder. And then, so with our path visualizer, from what I know and my understanding is, there is no way to use the end of the first path, which if we look at ro learnroadrunner.com and we go into trajectories overview, you can see in a sample trajectory with multiple trajectories, a sample autonomous, we have two trajectories. And the start pose of the second trajectory is the end of the first trajectory, which is pretty straightforward, basic roadrunner stuff. But as from my understanding, there's no way to replicate the end of the first trajectory in our path visualizer. If you know of a way to do this, please comment down below in the comments. So what we need to do instead is, since we know that theoretically our robot will be perfect and move according to plan with our simulation, as of course there's no mechanical difficulties well, we run this, when we do this, we run this error. Let me delete this to show you. So when we run our simulation, it does the same thing every time because there are no mechanical difficulties associated with the simulation. So when you're actually doing Roadrunner or on your robot, there's of course going to be some small inaccuracies with your robot. But with the simulation, what in real life, in real Roadrunner on your robot, you would of course use the end of the first trajectory to account for any small inaccuracies. But for the simulation, we know that it's always going to go to this pose of X10, Y, negative 48, and a negative 90 heading every time because there are no mechanical difficulties with the simulation. So instead of using the end of the first trajectory, which it w as from my understanding we cannot do, we can simply create a pose of where we know the sec the first trajectory is going to end up. So we can do private val, let's say first pose, just for a name, we do pose 2D, and we this is our pose 2D of where we know it's going to end up. We can copy this into this pose, and so we know where the first pose is going to end up. So now that we have our first pose of where it's going to end up and where it's, we can create another builder and another trajectory with what we were doing before val builder two equals trajectory builder. Select it. And we can input our first, first pose, first pose. So that will be our first pose. And what we can also do, since we see that it does the start pose dot heading, we need to input our heading. We can also do first pose dot heading. And then we input our combined constraints for our drive constraints. Perfect. Now we have a second trajectory, but there are, of course, no movements associated with this trajectory. So we need to add some some path and movements. So we can select um, color second builder. And we can now we can add our the movement we want to do, which is a spline. So we can also copy this. You could just write it out manually, whatever you're going to do. Pretty straightforward, as I've explained before. So we input this and we need a ch change for the job for the Kotlin syntax for no new. And perfect. No errors. 
we have our spline 2 and a line 2 linear heading. In this simulation, it will end up, it will do a spline 2 from where we end up on the line 2 linear heading. So if we run the program with the green triangle, and then the simulation pops up. Uh oh, what did I? Oh, okay. So what, also the second, the th final thing you need to do when you're adding another trajectory is you need to add it to the list of this function. So it returns it to the actual simulation because if you don't add the trajectory, it's of course not gonna, it's not gonna be passing into the simulation. So what we need to do is list.add builder, oh, builder two, and then we build the trajectory like you would normally do. And perfect, it's added to the list. So if you run it again, we see that it lines to the linear heading and then it splines to our vector. So that is exactly what we want. And this simulates this perfectly. And so when you're fine tuning um, and you're using the R path visualizer, you can change the, say the X, to where you want it to go on the field. So say I, I wanted it to go to a different position, it, it shows you the field, so you can change your trajectories according to what it would do on the field, which is, I think, very powerful, and that allows you to even program your autonomous, with, even without a robot, a physical robot with you. So that would be it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and there were no errors using it. If there were any errors, comment down below and I will try to address them and maybe update this video or address them in the comments. Also, hit up the FTC Discord. There, there are some very helpful people on there and they should solve most of your errors using this. So thank you, like, subscribe, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next tutorial.